All right, this is our 2021 Honda Ridgeline. It's the RTL-E trim level. It has 38,500 miles on it, and I'm due for an oil change and tire rotations. Check out the video description, and you will find a bunch of helpful links to um, parts and tools that I use that you can buy on Amazon. I'll put helpful information like torque specs and socket sizes and filter sizes and all that kind of information in the video description. The first thing we're going to do before we jack the car up is we're going to loosen all the lug nuts while they're on the ground. So just break them free one or two turns. And I'm also, while it's down lower, uh, if you look in here, this is a, uh, this is harder to do after it's jacked up, but this is where we're going to add the oil at right here. So while it's on the ground, I'm going to break that free because it can be uh, harder sometimes. That was easy. So while it's on the ground, we'll put this funnel in there. It goes right in here. And then just to keep debris from getting in there while I'm working, I'm just going to leave that rag in right there. So that when it's jacked up, I'm not having to kind of see over that. And then this is our dipstick, our oil dipstick, this, this orange. So what I'm going to do is just break that free as well, just so there's a little bit of airflow in there so that when we drain the oil, it'll drain a little faster. So if you have a locking lug nuts, you're going to want to get your locking key. And so I'm just going to go around and, and uh, loosen the lug nuts. So on the tires, it takes a 21 millimeter socket on this. The reason we're breaking them free before we jack it up is the weight of the car holds the wheel still if it's on the ground, but if we jacked it up first, the tire would want to rotate as we're trying to loosen the lug nut. So, always good to remember to loosen them first. you where the front jack point is so coming in from the front right in the middle right in the middle of the vehicle it's gonna be right right here this bracket right here so I'm gonna put my jack saddle right on this this will be in the middle of my jack saddle so this is the the jack saddle right here so that'll be right in the right in the middle that's our front jack point very easy to get to
believe on this one with this jack, I think I want four teeth showing on the front and five teeth on the back. I'm gonna verify that to see if that's right on this. So my, okay. So right at this point on the vehicle, here's my door line right here. So it's about right here. If you look under here, you can see this right here. This is where I want the jack stand, right there. So there's one just like it on the other side. And there'll be one just like it on the back that I'll show you when we get to there. So I just want to take my jack under there. And I want to center it right under that point. And I'm going to put it a little bit back from the middle. So instead of putting it in the middle, I'm going to put a little bit back that way because when I lower the jack it's gonna settle back just a little bit so this one's the same exact as that one and four teeth showing one two three four this helps me get it to the right height and this is just comes from experience of doing it and then writing down where you want it. Okay, so now I'm gonna let this down gently. Let it go into the jack stand. Okay, I'm gonna let the jack down about three inches or so. Because when I jack the back end up, the front's going to come down. So I have a gap right now in between the jack point and my jack. These, this one's where it needs to be. You can tell even after it comes down, my wheels are coming off the ground for a tire rotation. And even though I moved them back a little bit to account for the vehicle coming back, it's still on this end of it, but it's all the way on there. So it's, it's safe like it is. So these I want to be a five teeth on the back. One, two, three, four, five. All right, so the back jack point is quite a ways under there, unlike the front one. Uh, okay. So you're going to see it, it's sticking down there right in the middle, so we're going to make contact with it so you can see it, that's right in the middle. This is our rear jack point right there, you see it making contact? Okay, so that's also very easy, very easy to see. jacked it several times and the wheels are just now coming off the ground tires are just now coming off the ground Okay, 
So here, again, this is the back door line right here. So you can kind of tell where I'm at. So there, oh. there's the jack stand support right here. So I have my jack there. There's a gap right now, so I'm gonna let it down once I get the other jack in place on the opposite side. So looking from the side, you can tell where your jack stands are located in relationship to the doors. back up to where it just barely makes contact so that my weight of my vehicle is on the jack stands but in the event that one of them would fail the jack's already in place to support it so that one's good I'm gonna come back and check my front ones again since I moved the vehicle around. Just want to make sure they're still in the right place. That one is. This one is. But now that the jack stands are all there, I want to line this one up again and just make contact just barely with that front jack point again and that way there's a safety so this right here is one of the more time consuming parts of the job and the most important safety wise so definitely want to get jacking up the vehicle right so our next step is going to be to remove this tire because as you'll see we're going to need this to access our oil filter and our oil so even if you weren't doing a tire rotation you would still want to take this tire off but i always do the tire rotation with the oil change so that's going to be my next step to remove that wheel all right so we're going to start by taking off this wheel so remember these are already loosened so i'm going to use a, a impact gun just to get them off the rest of the way So come on over this way. This is why we do this. Even if you're not rotating the tires, it gives you access to your oil filter right here. This blue thing is our oil filter. And then our oil drain bolt, I'll show you later, is on under there. So that's gonna be our next job to take that off. Okay, so what happens when we got some plastic sheeting we have something to catch our oil when we get to the when we take that filter off 
We also cut a little piece of plastic sheeting because this oil filter, when we loosen it, it's going to drip oil on this metal bar right here. So I'm going to take this sheeting. I'm going to wrap that bar right under the filter a little bit just to help with the cleanup. And I think I'm going to need a little more than that. So, all right, so I grab my scissors. I'm just going to, going to cut some off here of this plastic sheeting. bit more work now help me uh, not have to clean up as much later all right so there's our oil pan under there for this oil filter I like to use one of these kind of strap style uh, they're thin you can kind of get it under there I'll put links to all the parts I use in the description so you can get the right size so you always got to think on these uh, which way you're trying to go with it so um, I think I'm gonna want to go this way to loosen yep all right I'm loosening I'm gonna go ahead and get my wrench out before it gets oil all over it get a rag ready and loosen it up till it starts to drip okay it's dripping filter goes I got my new one ready so I'm gonna go ahead and get it on there I already put oil on this black seal so that it be lubricated so I'm gonna get it on there that new filter I can just hand tighten now I can get that messy, messy plastic off there get rid of this glove wipe up any thing that made it past the plastic Before I go any farther, I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean this up and get me a new glove on before I keep working with the oil. Change this one also since it ripped when I was tightening the filter. Alright, so entering in here, I'm going to show you where the oil drain bolt is. Okay, so that you can see our blue oil filter up there. So then under there come over here and it's this bolt right here this is your oil pan and this is the oil drain bolt so that's what we're working on we're going to be taking that off letting the oil drain and then we'll be replacing the crush washer 
and torquing it back down. So that's what we're gonna do now. Wanted you to see the location so you could find it because I'm not gonna be able to have the video under the car here. It takes a 17 millimeter socket to loosen. So I've got one of those here, but then once I get it broke free, I'm gonna experiment. I bought this um, magnetic socket, which I have on this one. So once I get it broke free with this, I'm gonna use this magnetic socket in hopes that when it breaks free, that drain bolt will stick to the socket and not fall down in the oil pan. But if it does fall down, all I gotta do is get it out of here. So, so I'm gonna pause and put some better gloves on over the top of these so that my knuckles don't get all messed up. And then I also need to kind of position myself differently to be able to get this, I think. Oil. I'm try this out. Experiment. Also, you gotta remember this oil is gonna shoot back this way, so I wanna get my pan where it's kinda gonna catch it if it shoots back a little way. There it goes, and the magnetic socket worked. It stayed in there. So now I'm just gonna get this rag and just keep it from dripping everywhere. Get that oil off my tool. But that worked exactly like I hoped. So there's the crush washer stayed on there. So we'll reuse the bolt and we'll um, change out the crush washer. So there's the crush washer we'll take off. That's our old one. So I'm gonna throw that, throw that away. This is our new one right here. These are a 14 millimeter crush washer. So we'll put that on there so it's ready to go. All right, so we're just barely dripping oil right now. So since I have to rotate like 99 point something percent of the oils out of there, but it's still dripping. So I have to rotate the tires anyway. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start doing that while that drains so on this car the front tires rotate to the back on the same side and then the back tire crisscrosses to the front on the opposite side so this tire that we took off is going to end up right there so right now i'm just going to go around and sort of take the tires off and put them where they go So one thing I do, I grab this little screwdriver. Whenever I rotate the tires, kind of look them over for these rocks and stuff. Just make sure the tire's in good shape. So I get a little screwdriver and any decent sized rocks I see that are stuck, I just kind of pick them out. Uh, you don't have to get every every one or but i kind of look for the big ones check my tread depth make sure they're in good shape and then you also can kind of look for any kind of damage or bubbling or anything just to make sure your tires are safe when you rotate them all right so this one is going to go to the front on the other side and then the other thing i do when i rotate them i'll take some 
uh, brake clean and just kind of spray to clean the brake. And then uh, this is the first time I bought this truck used. It's the first time that I've rotated the tires. So I'm gonna grab one other thing that I'm gonna show you that I do. And this probably only needs to be done one time. It lasts a long time. This is, again, I'll put links to everything in the description. This is 3M copper anti-seize brake lube. And what I do with this, again, this is probably gonna last many, many years. Um, but to keep the wheel from sticking to the hub, it's a good idea just to put some of this in between. You don't want it on your bolts. Kind of right here, you just paint it in there. Just kind of paint it on there. Just that little bit will help that over the life of the vehicle. Let me go ahead and move this tire over to the front on the other side. All right, before we continue, I'm gonna go back to the oil. Um, so we can go ahead and finish up this oil chain. So at this point, all the oil has come out. We've got our new drain plug there and I need my torque wrench. You could just snug it up, but the manual says 30 foot pounds. So I have a torque wrench here and it's set to 30 foot pounds. So, I'm just going to go ahead and use that. So I'll take take this socket off there, put it on this one, so I'll have that ready. I just want to I want to start it by hand. Never always like starting things by hand, so I can feel that I'm threading it right. All right, so I get a good clean surface. I'm going to get my bolt in there. Got my crush washer on there. Uh, okay. So, yeah, sometimes it's hard just getting them started. Because sometimes you can't tell if you're going in straight or not. All right, so... Go ahead and turn it by hand until it's snug. And then I'm just going to go straight to the torque wrench on this. All right, I'm going to move my oil pan out of my way. Okay socket on there okay I heard that torque wrench click as soon as you hear that the first time you stop because that means you're at 30 and you don't want to over torque it that's the whole idea of using the torque wrench stop when you hear that first click all right so so we have changed our filter and we have drained all the oil and we have our new crush washer and our drain bowl in place so all we have to do now is put oil in it we don't want to forget that it takes 5.7 quarts so i already have my funnel in place i'm going to go get my oil Alright, so here's what we're going to do. It's 5.7 quarts, 0W20, so this is 5 quarts. I'm going to have this picture where I've marked 
and I have another 0.7 in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do this 0.7 first. You can kind of see why we put this funnel in there while it was on the ground. It's you know, pretty high up at this point. Of course, I could have done this after I lowered it, but I'm just going to go ahead and do it so that this job is done and then I can focus on the finishing the tire rotation. So All right, so I'm gonna take my rag, catch the bottom of this funnel as soon as I pick it up so I don't drip oil everywhere. All right, nice and clean. I don't see any drips. So we just kind of snug that up a little bit. And then we're gonna push our dipstick back in now I've already done this, I already know that 5.7 is exactly what it needs, just like the manual says, so I don't need to worry about checking the dipstick after I drive it and stuff like that. That's good to do the first time you do an oil change on a vehicle. Like say if it says 5.7, maybe you put in 5.4, drive the vehicle, let it sit for 10 or 20 minutes, and then check the dipstick level and get it perfect and write down what you did. I've already uh, done that with uh, these Honda V6s, so when they say 5.7, that's, that's exactly what we end up needing. All right, so our oil change is done. So now we're kind of in the middle of a tire rotation. So we were doing some of that while our oil was draining. So now we're just gonna pick up where we left off. So the two tires on this side are off. So now um, what I'm gonna do is take this first wheel that was from there and I'll kind of move it where it's going to go and I, I didn't inspect it either like for rocks. So I'm gonna look at it, make sure it looks good. All right, so it is gonna end up right here. This is All right, so we're going to put all these back on. So while they're in the air, we'll just uh, snug up the lug nuts, but we will not torque them until we get, get it, the vehicle on the ground. Always recommend starting all the nuts by hand instead of trying to use a power tool. It's the only way to really tell if you're cross threading or not. Just get a good three or four turns on there.
So all we're doing with this is just snugging them up, not tightening them down. Our tires are on there snug. So now we're gonna take the uh, truck off of jack stands. So we kind of do a reverse order of how we jacked, jacked it up. So, so I'm gonna start by lowering this because when I jack the back end up, to get those floor jacks out, the front end is going to want to come down a little, and this is going to hold it up. So I'm going to let this down a few inches, and then I'm going to jack the back up and get rid of these floor jacks in the back. this down gently okay so now we're going to reset our maintenance minder after our oil change so let's see what we got here Go to the main menu there. Um, settings. Vehicle. Scroll to the bottom. Maintenance info. Okay, oil life. Is that 40%? I want to reset that. Would you like to reset maintenance information? reset okay uh, all right so now that our uh, truck is back on the ground the uh, torque for these lug nuts is 94 foot pounds so I have a half inch torque wrench set to 94 
So again, first click I stop. Okay, that's it. And the way that I do it, I start with the one with the key and then I go clockwise every other one and there's five of them. So I know when I'm done because my next one going clockwise every other one would have been back to the key again. And you don't want to do it again because then you'll over torque it. So. Okay, so that's done. So the other, only other thing we want to do with the tires is check the air pressure. It's uh, 35 PSI all the way around. So makes it nice because if you had the right amount of air pressure in before the tire rotation, it's still going to be right. Whereas some vehicles have a different pressure from the front and the back tires. So I like that it's 35 all the way around. Yeah, I have a review of this compressor on my channel. I actually own three. Okay, it's set to 36 right now, so I'm going to put that down to 35. It will stop automatically when it gets there. Okay, so they're all at 35. So that makes the tire rotation done. Um, I want to go ahead and show you how I, the containers I have uh, to make oil disposal easy. Um, So I use this, you know, to capture it, but then I store this container, which is like a two and a half gallon, so it holds like 10 quarts. And I have this container to hold my oil filters that I can save until we go to the, um, I have an O'Reilly Auto Parts next to my house. So that's where I go to recycle this, but I bought this so I don't have to do it every time. I can wait until I have enough. So I have this funnel I put in there and then I just take uh, this cap right here, loosen it up. I'm going to be careful not to tip it too much. If you can get the camera in this corner, there's some oil that was in this soaker pan that's cooling there in the corner. And I'm going to end up with a mess if I tilt it all the way. So I'm going to leave some of it in there. Put that cap back on. 
And what I'll do is I'll leave this cap off of there for a little while and give it, give this some time to drain out into there before I put this cap back on. So this I'll store in this and then I'll keep my filters in here. So whenever this is full, which looks like it'll probably be after the next, after the next oil change, um, I'll bring this and the two oil filters and then um, makes it easier and cleaner because these things are a pain to transport and they're not the cleanest. So I found that this jug doesn't leak and those don't leak. So that's our job um, for today. We changed the oil, rotated the tires, uh, showed you how to jack the vehicle up safely. Um, so I hope that's been helpful. Just wanna remind you that you'll find a ton of useful links in the description. I'll put links uh, to Amazon links to every part that I can think of that you might need. And if you need something I don't mention, go ahead and ask me in the comments and I'll try to respond to that. And I'll also uh, just put some helpful information in there, crush washer sizes, torque uh, numbers, all those things, the socket sizes, all that will be in the description. So I hope that uh, this has been helpful to you and thank you for watching.